Okay, I'm very delighted to be joined by Francesco Molinari. Francesco, welcome to the Ryder Cup. Thank you. Um, your first Ryder Cup since 2012, the, the Medina, miracle of Medina. Um, just give us your thoughts on, on being back in the team this week. Yeah, it's, it's great to be back, obviously. Uh, it's not the nicest feeling to watch you from home. So uh, I've worked really hard to, to get back here and uh, I can't wait for the, for the week to get started. Uh, seems like everything is in place for an amazing week uh, with the big crowds expected and, and the course. So really can't wait to start. It's been a terrific year for you personally on the golf course. Um, just give us a sense of, of what that does for your confidence level coming into the Ryder Cup as a, as a major champion. Uh, yeah, it's, I was saying outside, it's different obviously coming in after a season like I've had. Uh, I think I've improved a lot as a player since 2012 and uh, I hope to show that on the course this week. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, it doesn't really matter what you've done so far. It's about those three days and the kind of golf that you can produce in those three days. So uh, I'm looking forward to some good prep these next few days and hopefully some good golf at the weekend. Thank you very much. We'll go straight into some questions. We'll start with Martin on microphone two, please. Francesco, can you give us a, a sort of flavour of how your life's changed since you became Open champion, a major winner, and, and where, where the best place you've been with the Claret Jug in the time? Yeah, well, I mean, my life hasn't really changed. You know, I, I went back and I'm uh, fortunate enough to, to have a, a wife and two kids that bring me down to earth pretty quickly. So, but yeah, it's, it's changed in the sense that uh, I've played mostly in the States since and, and uh, you know, down the fairways, lots of people congratulating me, and, and you can see how big it is, and, and also how nicely it was received. That it's obviously very nice from from my side. Uh, and yeah, the Claret Jack, the, the first few weeks, it was with me all the time. Now I've learned to leave it behind, at least sometimes. Uh, I've been asked a lot of times if I if I drank out of it, and I've not done that yet. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's going to be a time for that and there's still obviously this week was, was a massive focus so I, I, I probably needed a few weeks after the Open to kind of settle down and, and get back to, to the new normality and, uh, and then since then it's been about really preparing for this week and, and uh, trying to get here as, in a, as good a form as possible. Major winner, do you feel you have a new st stature in the European team from previous Ryder Cups? Uh, <laughs> no, I, th I think, yeah, in, in some ways, but in the end, like I was saying, you know, we, we're 12 players. I think the 12 of us are, are really, really uh, capable of, of great golf. Uh, I think this is probably the, the best team I've, I've been part of. Uh, so, yeah. I think everything kind of resets this week and uh, I'll do my best. I'll see how many games, how many matches I'll, I'll play and whatever it's going to be, I'll, I'll do my best to, to bring some points and uh, try to help the, the cause of the team. Got a microphone one, John, please. Uh, Frankie, uh, Tommy was in here just now and said that you and he are going out this morning. Um, what are the strengths of his game and what, what would be... Uh, what would please you most about playing with him? Uh, he's an amazing, talented player. I think he's, he's been through a, a tough spell and that probably made him even more resilient. And I think coming out of that, he's now more confident than ever. Uh, he's a really complete player. You know, there's, there's no weakness in his game. He's a great driver of the ball. He's the irons really well, pass well. So I think anyone on the team would be happy to, to partner him for, for the doubles. But yeah, to be honest, I, I don't know what's going to happen. And whoever of the other 11 guys is going to be that I'm going to play with, is, they're all talented players. And I can't wait to, to share the emotions of the, of the course with them. 
With a microphone three, Cara, please. Frankie, when you played at Medina in 2012, you were up against Tiger in that Sunday singles, and actually winning that got the final point for the team as part of that victory. A couple of things. First of all, what do you remember from, from that day? And secondly, you were playing with Tiger again in the final round at Carnoustie. Uh, beat him then, of course, again to win your first major. Would you like to face Tiger again this week? What are your impressions of when you do play with him? Yeah, I, I like playing with him. Uh, it's, it's hard to say that you like playing with Tiger in the last match in a Ryder Cup like it was at Medina because it's pretty intense. So the, there's, uh, there's a lot of pressure. But yeah, the memories of that day were obviously seeing the guys go out first and doing an amazing job and kind of getting us back into, into, the, into the cup. And, uh, and then the last few holes, it was really about keeping the ball in play and, and trying to, to keep the match alive for as long as possible. Uh, I had a couple of chances to, to go one up, I think, on, on 15 and 16, but missed those parts. Uh, but it was, I think, you know, for Martin and for the other guys that were in the last few matches, it was really about keeping every match open and, and uh, try to, to give them some, some confidence with that. And, uh, I don't know if, I, if I'll draw him again this week. I'll, I'll do my best, like I always do. And uh, uh, he's obviously in, in great form. It was nice to see him winning last week. I think he, he really deserved it after the season he's, he's had. Uh, but yeah, then this week it's a different story. And in 18 holes, anything can happen. So if I do face him, I'll, I'll do my best to get something out of it. We've got Alex on mic four. Frankie, just to follow up on Martin's question, so when you bring the clear jug with you, what do you do with it? <laughs> but nothing. That's why after a few weeks I, I decided maybe it wasn't the case to bring it with me all over the place. But no, the, the first few weeks it was just about seeing it, really, putting it on a table. And, and for a guy like me, it takes, it takes a while to, to realize you know, that I've done and I've, I've accomplished something like that. So yeah, it was just about leaving it on the table where I, wherever I was staying and, and sometimes looking at it and looking at the names. And uh, obviously, I've got it for one year. And uh, I need to enjoy it as much as possible. And uh, uh, I think use it as well to, to gain confidence from it and to really deeply understand what I've done and, and how, how I did it. And just if I can. Sure. Thanks, Steve. Just to follow up on an, another question. Do you feel like you have a different swagger when you walk into a room like you're going to walk when you walked into yesterday because you do have an open championship and do you feel more of a, a belonging than maybe you might have in the first two Ryder Cups? Uh, no, I, I think you know the the two teams I've been a part of. Everyone was was feeling like they belonged, and one of the strengths of, of the of the European side, I think, has always been you know making everyone feel the same. We you know we we all start at zero points at the beginning of the week, so it doesn't matter if you won a major, if you won more than one major, just how how many points can you can you win this week? Uh, so I don't think I have a, a different swagger from that point of view. And, and I don't think I'm the kind of guy anyway to get in a locker room and, and shout things. And, and that's, that's not the way I do things. So I'll, I'll try to, to lead if you want. If, if, if they want me to lead, I'll try to lead with, with my style. I'm, I'm not going to change anything for three days. Got a microphone too on the right hand side, you. Francesco, you seem to be the only person at Kernusti who wasn't getting carried away in the, the excitement of Tiger Woods possibly winning that, that major championship. Is that, can you talk about the, the mental challenge of that at the time? And now that he's coming in here with so much hype, having just won, is that something that the European team maybe need to, to learn from you? Uh, yeah, it, it was a challenge. I think that the, probably the, the biggest challenge was when, when the draw came out. Uh, if, if I'm completely honest, like on, on the Saturday night, you, I wasn't 
exactly hoping to, to be paired with Tiger. Not because I don't like to play with him, but because of obviously, like you say, the, the hype and you know, with him being in contention in a, in a major, it's going to be uh, noisy and it's going to be a lot of people. So uh, the most challenging part was probably that moment when the draw came out. But then, you know, I quickly managed to, to think, you know, whatever, I, I, I don't really care. I'm here to, to do a job and uh, they, they can't really influence how I do my job. So. Uh, for me, that's that's going to be the the same this week. Obviously, the the, the crowd is going to be on our side, but uh, uh, yeah, I think each one of us needs to really uh, focus on on the job in hand and 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 focus on on doing their things and and the things that make them successful, and and that will help us to to be a successful team. I'm going to go and microphone one on the front, please. Francesco, uh, about the course. How do you know it? Uh, how do you feel it? Uh, and about uh, some American players that don't know it at all. So, what do you think about? Yeah, well, it's a course that I like a lot. I enjoy playing here. It's one of my favorite venues on the on the European tour. Uh, I've had some pretty good results in the past. I think it's a course that it's in front of you. There's no secrets. There's no tricks. Uh, it's a it's a strong, tough course. You need to hit good golf shots off the tee and into the greens. Uh, I'm not sure how much of an advantage it will be for us knowing it well. It, it can, I think the only advantage we can have is maybe if the condition conditions change between the practice rounds and the tournament days, like different wind directions and, and things like that, because we've seen the course with the any conditions and, and they are going to have only three days to to kind of see the course and, and, and learn how to play. But yeah, it's it's in front of you. I think it's it's a great course because, it, it you know, in the end, whoever hits the the, the biggest number of, of good goal shots is going to probably win the match. So that's the kind of course that you want. Got a fan of Mike three, please. Well, you talked about your style and your passion is very insular versus the two guys that came in before are very outwardly emotional. Can you just run me through the pros and cons of both styles in this context of the Ryder Cup? Uh, well, I, I can say about my style. I, I'm not too sure I can comment on, on the style of any other players. But look, it's it's a great week. It's it's. Uh, the highest adrenaline and the highest pressure you, you're ever going to feel on, on a golf course. Uh, and like I said, you, I think the biggest thing is you need to deal with it the way you deal with it normally and, and in the way you know you can be successful. There's, there's no point in, in trying to be something that you're not. Uh, I think we need to obviously embrace the, the support of the crowds and, and, and we'll, we'll try to do that. Uh, but then, yeah, I'll, I'll be the, the same me that I've always been, and uh, uh, we we'll see if I get paired with someone that has a bit more flair. Probably be a good balance as well. And just quickly, what were your impressions of the impression of you on the video last night? <laughs> I'm, I'm actually thinking of it all the time now here, answering questions. So <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> smile a bit more. And <laughs> We've got a tighter microphone for that. Francesco, how would you describe the pressure of trying to win the Ryder Cup compared to the pressure of trying to win the Open at Carnoustie? You won't believe me, but it's nowhere near. Carnoustie was nowhere near Medina or any any matching ways. So uh, it's it's hard to believe, but it's uh, it's probably because you play for a team, you play for a continent in our case, uh, and you know about the tradition and, and the, what players have done in the past. Uh, so yeah, I was a lot calmer at Canusti than what I will be from Friday morning onwards. Okay, I think we've got time for two more questions for us at the back, and then we'll come to you, John. Uh, uh, Francesco, just go back to Medina again um, when uh, Tiger conceded on that last match. It all looked really confusing. What did he say to you? What, do you re what was going on at that time? Because you knew that the couple had been retained. 
and Tiger was, was off the green and, and in trouble. What actually did he say to you? What happened on that? No, he just obviously said congratulations, and and you know there there wasn't much talking. There were people drinking already and and jumping around, so there wasn't really time to to talk a lot. Uh, he was yeah very very confused, very uh, very strange to be honest, because we we knew with Martin's part we retained the calf and. Uh, uh, they told us obviously to to finish the matches, no matter what what happened before us. Uh, but yeah, to to be honest, I have a lot more memories from the other 17 holes. The 18th hole was just a bit of a of a blur, just because there were, like I said, people jumping around and and everything was over really already before the conclusion of our match. Just quickly. Um the last man to play and captain a uh, team in the Ryder Cup uh, was Arnold Palmer in 63. Have you ever thought about four years' time, would you want to captain and play? Is that, if I put no. some money on it, would, would that be worth, <laughs> no. a, worth a bet? No. Too young? No, no, not too young, but uh, there's enough stuff going on, you know, if you're a player or, or a captain. So, and in your home country, it would be... <laughs> I would probably lose a few years of my life, and I don't want to do that, honestly. We've got a John on microphone one, please. No, sorry, I asked a question about the humour. Okay. Okay. The impression. Are you, are you giving us a, a new... Well, can't you tell the difference? <laughs> <laughs> Well, on that note, Francesco, thank you for joining us. We wish thank you the hell out. Thanks.